I go back to the 1979 Daytona 500, right? They right. had a fight down in turn three. Well, I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here. I had a little light bulb moment the other day. I was sitting there researching the 1979 Daytona 500 for this op- podcast we're going to do. And I was I was reading through all of this information for the first time as a series owner of the Cars Tour. And we've had some things in the Cars Tour over the last couple of weeks that have been, huh, man, we, you know, we could do a better job there. What, 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 a couple of things that could have, a couple, a couple of things need to be buttoned up, right? You know, in terms of fighting or, or whatever it may be, right? There, as a series owner, now I'm starting to recognize things about our race program and our, our the way things are, you know, the way things happen in an event that I'm like, oh man, I really wouldn't have cared about that before. But now as I'm, I'm owner of the series, I would, I want that to go differently. So I started thinking, man, I want, you know, C- CBS is broadcasting this race. They start fighting down in the corner and CBS is probably thinking, hell yeah, put the camera on that. Woo, man. We've got 15 million people watching this right now. This is amazing. I can't believe we, I, we never thought we'd get this type of drama, this mm-hmm. type of finish. The King is winning the race. Now we got two, you know, three guys down here duking it out. I bet Bill France Sr. was sitting there going, what a freaking embarrassment. Right. What in the hell are these idiots doing? We're Maybe. on national TV, CBS, 16, 15 million people watching. They need to quit. They need to stop this shit. Yeah. I'm pissed. It's possible. Yes. Bill France was not sitting there going, oh, hell yeah. And then he thinks, oh, it's not Jody Ridley and, and Joe Rutman. Yeah. It's the Allisons right. and Kale Yarbrough. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> in that moment, when you have these things that happen with Denny or with Ross on pit road, I think there is a, there's a line you cr- that, that NASCAR doesn't want crossed that dips into, Hey man, this is a little embarrassing. This mm. isn't our best look, but for the networks, they love it. And more than likely they're going to take that baton. And they're going to run with it. You're going to see that punch a lot over the next oh, several weeks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hey, when we go back to Kansas next year, you're going to see that punch on pit road. You're going to see that back straight away, last lap tangle. And so, you know, these moments, while we might not love everything about some of what happens, they help elevate the sport, promote the sport. It's, it's, it's ammo to really go out there and say, hey, everybody, this is what happened here last time. Y'all might want to come tune in. The other thing I think... Um, which I, you know, I think that's pretty much my only point about, you know, what happened on the back straightaway. But with the, this is with the punch on pit road. I freaking hate physical confrontation. I hate it. I hate conflict. Um, I don't like seeing people get punched in the face. Um, but I think that regardless of that, I mean, you know, I was watching a clip on. Social media, Claire B. Lang posted an interview um, uh, that Justin, uh, the, uh, that owns the car, Justin uh, for, Mark, yeah, yeah, for Ross. He he's on there and he says, "We kind of saw, we kind of knew this was coming." So I mean, I feel like that you know, if you're if you're Ross, if you're Justin, and your whole you know the track house group, you're over time, right? Ross has been getting beat up and criticized and nitpicked, and every every move he makes is sort of um, you know, this divisive sort of, is it okay? Is it not okay? Uh, for the last two years. And so I think Ross, Justin, and all of them are sitting there going, all right, man, keep your guard up that something's coming, something's coming. Well, here it was, here it was on pit road. And, and Ross, I think was, I think if, you know, if I think on an average day, Ross probably doesn't get physical. He probably just tells him to stop, grabs, you know, grabs no and tries to control him. But I think with everything that's been going on and building up, they are they they the you know the pressure cooker it popped, and so while I don't love the the physical contact or or pushing and shoving punching for sure we don't I don't like I don't want punching uh, happening on pit road between drivers I don't want that to become a normal thing. Here's the here's the one thing that's key. This is the thing. So this is NASCAR's opportunity to turn Ross Chastain from a superstar in the NASCAR bubble to a national star in the mainstream. This is it. All right, so when Dad was out there 
doing real similar things on the racetrack. He flat out dumped people mm -hmm. and would get out and, you know, well, he, he, he wouldn't really apologize for it as much as Ross does, but he would get out and say, hey, man, that wasn't, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing dirty driving. I got into him. My mistake. People around, so people around Dale Earnhardt, around 86, 87, up into the 90s, those people around him, they capitalized on his own track actions. They created a persona through marketing, through souvenirs that went nationwide, if not global. The Intimidator, the man in black, you know where you saw those, those for the first time? On a hat, mm. on a T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Dale Earnhardt didn't walk into the racetrack and say, hey, uh, from here on out, I'm the man in black. Oh, from here on out, I'm the Intimidator. No. That was a marketing campaign. That was a T-shirt. That was a hat that took off, right? It became a persona. We are, you know, we're there. Are we, though? With Ross. We're there. Where's my dropping the hammer Ross T-shirt? Mm. Where, you know, where is, give me, I don't care what it is, right? Where is, this is the chance. Look. What if he doesn't ever win a championship? And then Who cares? It doesn't matter? We don't. We can't. We can't not look. That's one thing your dad gave minute. us was we're, a quick championship. Hey, we're at the doorway. We're at the doorway, Mike, for the next big boom in NASCAR personalities, and all we got to do is walk right through it. Mm -hmm. Are we not going to walk through it because we don't know? Maybe he ain't going to win a championship one day, so we're just not going to go there. I'm just saying, man. If I'm NASCAR, if I'm Networks, if I'm Ross's people, if I'm Trackhouse. I'm turning Ross into a megastar off of this, off of the opportunity he's being provided with all of the network attention he's getting, all of the comments, all the criticism. Man, I'm building around that. Well, yeah, listen, this is the irony in the whole situation is that the drivers around him are doing all the building and the marketing for him. Kyle Some, Larson said it last week. Nothing bad ever seems to happen to him when he puts himself in these precarious situations. He's talking about on the track. But the same thing happened at Kansas. He actually comes out looking like a fighter. Yeah. Well, just, we now know Ross can throw a punch. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you there's not another driver out there that'll step to him now. I don't know. I'm just saying this is a – this is a – the the – <clears throat> the window of opportunity to really take a Ross, a per, take take Ross, and turn him into a bigger star, someone out, someone that can, it, it, someone that can go beyond the NASCAR bubble into the mainstream. This is it. The window of opportunity is here, and if his, if Trackhouse, if Justin and their, you know, their mental focus toward media toward toward uh, entertainment, toward sensationalism, and, and, and really, you know, self-promotion, they should be taking advantage of this, not shying away from it, not, not that they are. I'm just saying, you know, they, they shouldn't – they should look at this as a really cool opportunity to say, hey, we're going to own this, okay? If Ross is going to be the, 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 the villain or – not that he, I don't think he's the villain. I think he – if Ross is going to be a persona, right? Whatever that is, if you want to, you know, they, you know, Dad's marketing crew and souvenir business turned him into the Intimidator. They, they, they gave him that moniker, um, the Man in Black. All of those things they that came from a, a concerted effort and plan in the minds of people in the souvenir business and around that uh, marketing campaign. Dad wasn't actively sitting there going, oh man, you know, we're going to, I'm going to make this persona what it became. Am I wrong? I'm the part I was struggling, Dale is, is it's, it's using your dad as the example. I think there's better examples here. I like, think there is a responsibility. Using your dad as an example to anything comparable to any today's drivers just feels like a reach to me because we're talking about the greatest to ever do it. So let me just give you another example. Yeah. The, when I say, you're right. You don't have to win a championship to be marketable. That's a fact, right? You never won a cup championship, right. but listen, what Budweiser did with you and what some of your sponsors were able to do. I mean, MTV, all of that, you can name it. So there's absolutely marketable. The, I guess the thing I want to say is that the reason I think there's a responsibility by track house and by the sponsors to absolutely maximize on this moment for Ross Chastain. Yeah. The thing you got to run careful on okay. 
is the same thing like Danica Patrick was yeah. also extremely marketable. And NASCAR and everybody else like stepped through that door yeah. in a big way, including us, by the way. She yeah. ran here. But then again, you do need to back it up with performance. You do. You won two Daytona 500s. You were backing it up. And so I can say that there's comparable things and some opportunities and responsibilities Ross, that we could talk about now. Yeah. I just get I, get I get a little. Ross ran second last year in the championship. No, no. So, and, and so I do. That's my point. My point. I just a, don't. I'm not ready to go say the intimidator no, level no, no. type stuff. So that's the thing. So I'm not comparing Ross to Dad. I'm only using Dad. I'm only sharing. A, I'm only telling you that 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 the persona that Dad. The intimidator and the man in black and all that wasn't this ground swell. Wasn't his idea. Or, you know, <laughs> it wasn't his idea, and it didn't happen. It didn't happen just organically. It was. It happened because people saw it on souvenirs. This I know the man, Hank Jones. Yeah. I remember the day he came to Dad with the intimidator or the man in black stuff to for approval, and Dad and Teresa are sitting there going, hmm, "I don't know. What do you think, man?" This is it, you know, the self promotion thing was a bit new for dad or a little bit awkward. Obviously, you know, if you're going to go out there and put yourself out there like that, you. And so I remember when that when that material showed up and dad and Teresa had to approve mm. the mar the merchandise. Right. It wasn't it wasn't like this easy decision. Right. But it wasn't. It was Hank Jones who was running the souvenir business at the time. It came up. He's like, dude, this is going to sell. Trust me. This is going to, people are going to love this. This is what I'm saying that Ross and his camp might want to try to activate on. It's like, man, you're, you're a winner. You're in the, you're in the conversation, whether you want to be or not, you're in it. Every week they're watching you. They're criticizing, they're analyzing, they're, they're, you know, you're, you're getting talked about. You're gonna do, you know, you're gonna do things polarizing like you did on pit road. Lean into it, take advantage of it, market it, and and you'll do exactly what Justin Marks wants to do. You're gonna take Trackhouse and Ross Chastain into the stratosphere, the way your dad would that did with Richard Childress, frankly. Right. Yeah. Dude, that, that is a comparable thing. We're right there at the threshold. Walk, 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 walking through the door is literally effortless to, to make this happen. And so that will be interesting to me to see if – because Ross, I think, you know, is a bit apprehensive because he – I don't know that he wants all of this attention, right? He just wants to win and drive his race car, and he wants people to probably leave him alone and quit worrying about all the moves he makes and then just, you know, just let me go race. I'm racing how I want to race. That's the way I, I, I take Ross. I don't know exactly how he feels, but that's the way it comes across to me. But I think, you know, it's, it's, it's now or never in terms of like, hey, man, you, it, it's an opportunity to take your celebrity and your notoriety up another notch, if not even several notches. And what that would do for his marketability, I, I know there's, a, there's rumors about partnerships and sponsors coming in already for next year. For Ross, think about the opportunities that that would represent to them going forward with with additional partners. Uh, it's a win all across he, the board if he embraces it. Yes, if he, he embraces he's got it. got to. I mean, it, it reminds me of when you were trying to have conversations with Jimmy Johnson, where he's now doing everything on the track, but you're like, man, you are this awesome, fun personality off the track. Man, you need to show this more in yeah. interviews. And he was like, I'm not comfortable doing that. I don't want to do it. He made the conscious decision. He did not want to go open those things up to yeah. a complete marketing opportunity the way that he could have done. His decision, Chase Elliott has all the talent in the world. He makes the conscious decision. He lets his sponsors do things here and other, but yeah. it's clearly he's not embracing that to where it's maximizing and growing the sport. So you're bringing up a very good point, and that is to what point did the drivers have to go I know it's not comfortable, but it's what's best for our sport to embrace these opportunities as they are now creating, being created. Yeah. Um, and and th there's the thing. Ross has got the same decision to make. If he wants to say, I'm not comfortable, I'm not going to do that, well, that's his prerogative, but yep. it also is not going to really grow the sport either. We need stars. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, Denny was on social media the other day saying the biggest challenge for our sport right now is personality, stars that extend beyond the NASCAR bubble. Everybody, you know, we what we need to grow and become bigger is to bust out of this NASCAR 
bubble and a tr- and get in front of new fans that don't know who we are, right? And this is this is an uh, opportunity, I think, for that to the, for Ross to sort of ha- make that happen. Yeah. You know, everybody Chase, every Chase Blaney, all kinds of drivers are af- absolutely connecting to new fans. Not that no one else is doing that, but this is Ross's this is Ross's window of opportunity, right? To to sort of you know become more of a star in the sport and um you know and so when he does win that championship you know it the the sky's the limit on on who this guy can become all right, right? let me ask you real quick what about noah <laughs> <laughs> so all right noah you know i think noah is uh i was talking to clint boyer about this this morning we were we were on the phone um clint's got a cool little bike ride that he's planning for um for for all-star weekend he's trying to sell tickets if you want to you know want to know more about that i'm sure he's got some stuff up on his social media handles um so we were talking about that and um he uh he's like man you know noah just noah's just coming up there he's like everybody in the garage has been wanting to do what noah did go up there and confront Ross, right? But nobody has done it. They all, you know, talk about it in interviews and so forth. But Noah's like, you know what? I'm going to be the one that actually goes up to him and says something. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think Noah's been in a few physical altercations. And I think Noah made the mistake of grabbing him by the shirt. The grab you by the shirt guy always gets punched. Um, you, If you're going to be physical – now I'm no I'm no expert, <laughs> but if you're gonna be physical, I think you gotta swing, right? If you're gonna, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you get grabbed by you grab by the shirt. You're sort of opening up yourself, right? To you're saying to the guy, you're really letting that you know you gave off you give you give Ross the opportunity to swing on you, mm-hmm. and I don't know that you want to give, I don't know that you want to give him that opportunity. You want to take you know take things in your own hands and. Act first, right? Yeah. I don't know. Um, the thing I thought was interesting in all this was the drivers next to them. Like, Joey Logano oh, yeah, sitting yeah. there sipping his Coke like he just yeah. got back from the concession stand. Yeah. And Chase Elliott's in there just kind of stirring it up a little bit, dropping yeah. his comments and leaving. And I'm just like, this is a, this is, this is a, a, a reflection yeah. of, of the bigger picture here. And that is you got the rookie that's going to go in there and say, I got the balls. Yeah. Ain't nobody else got the balls. I got the balls. I know that Noah – is absolutely frustrated that he wasn't allowed to re- to to counter um, his punch. He had one coming, got blocked, and he wasn't able to. Uh, you know, I can imagine that if you're Noah, you're sitting there going, "Well, I'd dang, if I could have just, you know, boy, if I could have just got that Throw one in there." Um, so that's probably where he's at. He's had he was having a reasonably good day at points, running well in the top twenty. Noah was, um, and it's been a difficult year for him trying to figure out how to how to get the next gen car moving forward. But uh, seemed to be having a pretty good day. Got frustrated with Ross, and um, I just think that he probably is rethinking what he might have done differently in that situation so that he didn't get punched in the head. Don't you think? Don't you think he's thinking? Hmm. What should I have done not to have been the one to get punched? Yeah, probably I'm thinking that, especially because he he got punched. He I got mean, he got pretty, punched, he got and I know he's good. mad. I know, listen, uh, we're, we're all upset, you know, at the time of the security guard. The security guard doing his job. They they, they are absolutely doing their job. He did by it well. to break it up. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he did but, it pretty well. But, but he also, you know, muzzled the punch, the retaliatory punch, yeah. which, I you know, I think Noah's wish he probably drew that up a little differently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>